Okay, so the back of the carburetor, right in there, is where the micro switch is, or where it was. And for whatever reason, I don't know, it missed the arm, and I just don't, they're just, I hate it. It's not reliable. It doesn't seem like, uh, like the right way to do it. So, I installed a TPS sensor right there on the manifold. I uh, had to take the fuel regulators and stuff off in order to get everything the way I wanted it. But as you can kind of see here, it's a, just a regular TPS sensor with a hole drilled in it. Then a piece of stainless TIG rod to the arm of the carburetor so that when you give it gas, it moves the TPS sensor. Voila. And so now Jackie's going to calibrate the TPS on the screen. Uh, you don't have to use a laptop with fuel tech. That's another thing that's pretty cool about it. You can make changes in staging lanes. Uh, click on the little gas pedal icon. Yep. That's sensors and calibration. Click it again. TPS screen check. I've got no battery. Sorry. Okay. All right. Now you should be able to. So you see the voltage that it's at right now, pedal one up top. Mm -hmm. So you're going to click that as idle. So hit calibrate next to idle. Yep. And then now you're going to go full throttle. And now I always back my foot up a little. So if it says 3.39, no, go all the way back down. If it says 3.37 or whatever, pull it back to like 3.29 or th like really, yeah, what's that? There you go. And now click calibrate on full throttle. Now let off. And green arrow. Successfully calibrated. Now go back to the dash. One more again. All right. Now your TPS says what? Three. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we're going to fix that. I don't like it saying three. So hit it again. It works though, but yeah, hit it again. Okay, so this time uh, just touch the gas pedal just a little bit to make that pedal one position go up a little bit. Just a, just a hair. Yeah, that'll work. Calibrate the right, you're good. Now double check full throttle again, but don't calibrate it. Yeah. Okay. Give it a little bit back. Oh. All the way again. Yeah, 3.41 or some shit. Or three point, yeah, there you go. Right there, dude. That's fine. Yep. Okay. Green. Now you can probably put this in the next one or whatever. Alright, so you can see TPS at the bottom left hand corner, reading 0, 0.0, roll your foot slowly to the floor. Okay, that's fast. <laughs> yep, How slow? go again. You gave me the most sensitive No, pedal. I just want to see it. Look at that. Who says carburetors can't have control? Yeah. Look at that. Ruga, ruga, ruga. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love it. Jackie says the brakes suck. I'm guessing they're a little soft, which is normal after the first time you take a car out. You know, you, you bleed the brakes once on an all new system and then, you know, you usually should go back and bleed it again after the first time out. Yeah. I do anyway. For some reason, every time I build one. Even when this up, car was stock, you blood the brakes every day. I end up bleeding I was a like, lot. the brakes are fine. He was like, no, they're not. <laughs> the key to a good burnout. Well, the key to street racing is really staging. To be able to stage in your marks and back up and do it the same every time, that's a big deal. And uh, the brakes, people think that burnout is horsepower or whatever, but 90% of the burnout is brakes. Don't make fun of my water bottle brake bleeding kit here. Okay, pump, hold. Yeah. 
pump. Hold. Pump. Hold. You just pump the dang brakes. Hold. Ooh, there we go. Okay, pump. Hold. All right. Yeah, there may have been a little air in that one too. Last thing is the shifter. You set these shifter linkages in second gear. Shifter's in second. And you just want to reach up here and make sure it's loose. These shifters are set in second. Obviously, it's fine. It'll go in and out, no problem. Um, and from what we can tell, it was definitely in first gear, judging by the charge pressure and everything else. So everything here is good, but it's worth double checking while you're under here. So here we are back on the street, do some more testing with Caddy Jack, try and figure out what this car wants, try and figure out if there's anything, what was wrong with it or if there's anything wrong with it. And uh, before we came out in the shop, we made sure we got full throttle. We fixed a little bit of, you know, minor things here and there that were bugging us, and we should be, you know, ready to figure this thing out. First pass, we really just wanted to see, uh, basically, we want to basically make the same pass as we did before, just maybe n not the same amount of launch retard, and we wanted to make sure that it got full throttle now. So with the, with the switch working and the linkage working, we believe it was at full throttle, but we want to make sure. There's, you know, you can make a million of these passes and it's not going to matter. You know, we need, it, we would rather make the pass and know what was wrong or if there was something wrong rather than, you know, just start making huge changes right away. Uh, so changes for this from the last test session. This first pass is we know it's got full throttle. We think it had full throttle before, but we know now if it's going to, if it goes full throttle, we'll know it because we have the micro switch on it. Uh, we checked the shifter, we did the brakes, blah, 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 a little bit of minor stuff here and there. Uh, so first pass, 3,600 launch RPM, um, and instead of taking 10 or 12, 15 degrees out of it for launch retard, we're going to put 2 degrees in the base map. So uh, it's going to be basically 30 degrees when she lets off the button. So, you know, it should be quite a bit rowdier. If it didn't have full throttle before, if there was an issue before, um, it will fix it and it's just going to be fast as hell. Uh, if it did have full throttle, which we think it did, then we got more work to do, but we need to get this pass out of the way and figure it out. Turns out, uh, that thing was on the floor when it was that slow. Turns out, that deal was wide open throttle, and still, 
I mean, no threat of breaking the speed limit. <laughs> now, I realize that we built this as a nitrous car, but still yet, we're not going to turn the nitrous on until we know everything's right. If there's an issue here that we're not aware of, turning the nitrous on will quickly release the rods from their duty, and we don't want to do that. So we're just going to take our time. We can make these passes all day. So now it's time to make a change to see if we can actually, you know, to see if we can notice something because so far nothing we're doing is really making a big difference so now we're going to raise the launch rpm to 4200 rpm and we're putting the timing at 36 degrees off the brake so this is basically adding six degrees of timing and uh 600 launch rpm yeah 600 rpm to the launch so this should be a big swing for you know, a small tire car, even on motor, it should be a pretty big swing. But we are noticing a trend, and uh, you know, we have a feeling that we know what's going on, but we want to know for sure. So, forty-two hundred RPM it is, and uh, thirty-six degrees. As you can see from the second pass, uh, it's still dead. I mean, it's better. Don't get me wrong. It's moving, and it's starting to make it's starting to make some improvements. It's definitely getting faster, but we don't have another. We just added six degrees of timing. We don't have another six degrees of timing to add. You know, we can't go to 44 degrees or 42 degrees of timing. It's not going to go any faster. We can't, you know, we went from 3,200 or 3,600 to 4,200 RPM on the launch. We can't go to 6,200 or whatever this thing, you know, we may need to go fast. So we're starting to see a trend, but still yet, there are other things on the car that we're working on. There's transducers, there's data, there's, there's shock sensors and stuff. We're trying to get all that stuff scaled, ride height sensors, everything. So... You know, and we're still doing a little bit of idle tuning and uh, transition tuning and wide open throttle stuff. So we're still, you know, we're still working on this and the chassis, we're getting the chassis figured out. The shock settings are helping, but we are seeing a trend. And that is that uh, after this 4,200 RPM launch and 36 degrees, we noticed really quick that our uh, converter charge pressure is, uh, how do I say it? high high as draft balls high uh, i think on the last pass we were 136 to 140 on the charge pressure that's extreme uh you know in my experience we like to see 80 ish with no dumps or anything on just just a regular old you know naturally aspirated or nitrous car we like to see about 80 ish um 120 you can do 120 but the converter needs to be tuned for you know one needs to be way looser for 120 the charge pressure is uh the restriction in the converter as it as the fluid leaves the converter to go to the cooler and back to the pan to cool the fluid that we're measuring the pressure at that cooler circuit so basically we have 140 psi of back pressure in the converter is what we like to call it so um that's makes it really tight uh really really tight so uh, most of the time when you turn on a dump or something to loosen one it'll only take 30 35 psi out of the charge pressure so so you can see where we're at if we wanted to be around 70 or 80 and we're at 140 we are we're struggling so that will probably be what we look forward to next is going to be how do we overcome that uh, is it time for a converter change or, or we can, can we try something, you know? The biggest things we could do here would be, you know, possibly ratio. 
uh, in the rear, possibly ratio in the first gear, um, or just a lot looser converter. Or we could turn on two kits of nitrous. So I guess stay tuned to see what we end up doing. <laughs> <laughs>